Stories of this week is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. And by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen-testing machine. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at PonyExpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at BlackHillsInfosec.com to request a quote today. Today is the last day, or did the last day already pass for the t-shirt thing? No? Maybe? I don't know. You I think set that, the rules. I thought that was over. Well, Chris set the rules for this one. He's not listening. Okay. Never mind. That t-shirt deal is over. So there'll be another t-shirt deal coming soon. Right, Chris? <laughs> yes. And Chris, Jack is trying to get your attention about something, about video. Hey, there was a WordPress vulnerability this week. No. <laughs> no. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck it, fucking drink. Hey, wait. WordPress. Hey, hey, wait. There was Groundhog Day this week, too. So. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So Phil, the plugin Phil, 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 WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. WordPress sites <laughs> running fancy box for WordPress. Are you go- What is what going on? Are you Are you running fancy box on WordPress? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> nope. Bueller? No. Well, yeah, technically that's not a WordPress vulnerability. That's a fancy box vulnerability, right? Well, it's a plugin for WordPress called Fancy Box. This is a serious Yeah. We could probably do the Marcus Random like template for oh WordPress. God, like there was uh, a WordPress uh, zero day vulnerability in dollar sign plugin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone running WordPress needs to oh, update you, their did plugins. Did you put that in the show notes? No, I meant All right, to. All uh, right, let me find it because that. that's gonna yeah, that was classic. That's <laughs> It started out as an internal email chain that yeah, Marcus <laughs> took public. <laughs> it, it, uh, you get a templated email? That's awesome. It, it, well, it's yeah, a templated I'll, I'll link to yeah, it we'll, in the show we'll talk about here. it. When Jack finds it, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, un- unlocking BMW with no keys. Did you guys read this one? No. I've done that with a rock. <laughs> <I> mean, uh, <laughs> you know what? Conversation over. All you need to hack a BMW or any car for that matter to unlock the doors is a freaking rock. Or if you want to hack BMW's connected drive, which apparently allows... And this is a GSM, GPRS Edge modem, Larry, Okay. in this one. So conceivably, you could use this hardware right here to snip for that. Yep. And that's what this guy was using similar uh, hardware. And then he removed the system from his car, which is kind of interesting, and managed to be able to unlock the doors when all was said and done. Kind of, uh, it's a very lengthy article. I linked to in the in the show notes. Um, what do you do about it? You're screwed, basically. Actually, I think they did manage to get an update. Uh, all cars include a connected drive were manufactured by BMW, Mini, and Rolls Royce between March 2010 and December 8th, 2014, are affected. In Germany, that's around 423,000 vehicles worldwide. Uh, w- and in Germany, worldwide, it's 2.2 million cars. Uh, is now being checked as part of this. Uh, blah, blah. Well, we just expect everybody yeah. to play nice, don't we? Just don't go hacking BMW. Yeah, please don't do that. Thanks. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh <laughs> Oh boy! What else you guys got for stories? Um, what else you got for stories? <coughs> I got D-Link routers vulnerable to D- DNS hijacking. Huh. There was another D-Link vulnerability. Imagine that. <laughs> Insert oh, dollar wow. sign. Nice. Yes, dollar sign hacking D-Link routers. Update yep. firmware. Blah 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 blah. Yep, you guys need another template email for that one. Yeah. I don't know why I put this one in here, but I did because it's kind of silly. But someone ordered a sit stand desk. Have you guys seen these? Mm-hmm. These are the yep. motorized yeah. desks, and apparently it was a little crooked. <laughs> <laughs> and his like twelve hundred dollar 
Apple Cinema display started sliding. Oh, he had to do ooh. a diving catch, and it didn't fall, but he had got this defective. Uh-huh. De- apparently, the sit-stand desks are expensive, 1500 to $3,500 for a motorized mm. sit-stand desk. He found this $600 uh, sit-stand desk that uh, had all kinds of problems and doesn't come recommended. It was a Sca- Scandinavian Designs. And uh, he had some issues with it. Finally got a new one, but the new one was used. Apparently it was scratches on it. <laughs> and apparently tilted. It wasn't so new. <laughs> yeah. Well, the original one was, yeah. Oh, lifting you two 27-inch Apple monitors in a 24-inch Dell screen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, he uh, thought he was pissed. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I hear that's a cracking sound and realize my computer monitor is about to fall onto the floor. Only the left side was rising. I didn't immediately notice it. Instead, I was daydreaming about how pimp my home office yeah. setup was. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's wait. totally like one of us, right? You're like, you got the remote. You're like, look at this. Oh, my yeah. desk goes up and look, down. Look at huh? this. Look at the yeah. crack. Yeah, crack. Ah! Ah! <laughs> so uh, with, with those three monitors, perhaps you should have considered the weight rating of this desk device, though. I mean, that's... Mm. Could be. That's... Uh, not exactly lightweight. But after I read this, I, I sort of wanted a sit-stand desk. I didn't want necessarily his experience, but I kind of want a sit-stand desk now. Build one. Build well, one. Well, you two could have this experience. With Paul. a motor? Yep. Does it going to have a gas pull start? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, Larry, that's your job to build me a sit-stand desk. I'll get right on it right after CCDC. <laughs> um, so this uh, Adobe Flash Zero Jesus. Day again, Wait, which one again with the Groundhog the one, Day? The one from <laughs> ten yeah. years ago, or the one from this week? Uh, last week, from, yeah, the one from two weeks two, ago, the one from last week, the, the one, one tomorrow. From this week, I rest. From I rest week. my case. <laughs> ah, ah. See, I rest uh, my case. But <sighs> it's uh, it's, o- I, it's I okay. Th- wait, wait, wait. I see three of them. It's okay. Listed it's in the sandbox. Notes. Wait, no. <laughs> oh. It's okay. A- everyone updates their Adobe Flash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, really? If, really? If, you build, if you build a <laughs> container that you put Flash in, shouldn't you call it a litter box rather than a sandbox? Because you're trying to keep the crap in. <laughs> but no one needs wow. to visit. No one needs to visit websites that have Flash. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I got nothing to say except... Nice one, Paul. <laughs> but no, certainly Windows has protections to prevent applications like Flash from being exploited to gain system privileges. So one of the things I never like... Mind. <laughs> one of the things I <laughs> like about Firefox um, is that you can run Firefox without Flash installed and it doesn't try to install something for you and run its own render or anything. So the world is... Flash free and it forces a lot of websites to roll you back, roll you over to HTML5 based video. So like YouTube goes, hey, you, oh, oh, here you go, just watch this. Right? And a bunch of other well-designed sites will say, oh, you can't, oh, that's all right. Here, watch this. You know uh, why? A, but uh, the really crappy ones uh, don't show you Flash. And you know that's interesting. Yeah. I've had a Flash blocker plugin on my Chrome browser for a long time now. And I've noticed that I haven't really had to allow Flash on certain sites. You know why? Because it's HTML5. Well, it's HTML5, but you know why? Because everybody has decided to implement HTML5. Do you know why? So you don't have to run Flash. Do you know why? Because Flash doesn't sucks run security. on an iDevice. Ew. Right. It has nothing to do with security and everything nothing. to do with it being able it's to support. It's mobile. It's okay. well. It's not just uh, and, you know Android. Although you know you can find workarounds for them. Mm-hmm. But yes. The mobile platforms we all live with, uh, you, you can't be flashing. Yep. And that's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. I mean, that's... that's I just want to say to an employer from a long time ago, I told you so, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in regards to Flash, uh, it's all right. They went bankrupt and... Ha ha ha! I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait, Radio Shack? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Radio Shack, is, is that, are they in fact bankrupt now? They filed bankruptcy. They filed bankruptcy. Uh, officially, they have. Yeah. So what is about half of the stores in the U.S. are going to... Sprint will take over, will acquire, and then the rest are just going to die. A so sad the, yeah, there was some... Was that the only thing they were good for, was selling cell phones through Sprint? They had pretty much turned into... 
a cell bad, phone store. Bad Sprint stores. Yep. Bad, not even good Sprint not even, I mean, you go in there for things that, like, oh, crap, I need a, you know, a, a three and a half millimeter or eighth inch for us old farts. You know, stereo cable, I forgot one. I got a J. What do you mean you don't have any? For the love of, you know. Would you like some batteries today? <laughs> 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 oh, no. Can what about my, so what about our battery club cards? Okay, <laughs> can you tell us about the, the or, okay, how about your cell phone plan? Are you satisfied with it? Yes. yes. So I haven't been in a Radio Shack in a while. It, there really is nothing in there anymore? Oh, there is, but it's, yeah, it's it's it, largely overpriced. It's well, yeah. If you want to buy like an overpriced resistor or something gotcha. like that, yeah. yeah. But then again, if and you, you can't even you count on. I mean, you can't even count on being able to go in and get the electronic stuff that used to go right too. But of course, nobody built in fairness. Nobody makes stuff anymore, and nobody repairs stuff anymore, except a handful of freaks. Um, which, yep. Which is us and yep. our audience. And and quite honestly, it's been a good place to go and just you know pick up a spool of wire or if I needed something like that or. A desoldering iron when I found I needed one, or some. Well, that's what I'm. Gonna, that's what I'm going to miss, Larry. I hate to say it, but I am guilty yep. of going in there and uh, picking up those kinds of items. Yep. You know? And oh, Same here. I got to go pick up some of those nice little switches that have the little locking lever so that you can't turn them on and off with unless you lift the thing. And yeah. oh yeah. Now you're going to have to make orders from you know one of those large online catalog electronic. Which you, yeah, which you can never find what you're looking for. Yeah, exactly, because their websites know. completely Friendship. suck. Uh, anyway, no names mentioned. Yep. Um, so there are some SCADA vulnerabilities. <laughs> you got drink. You got Jesus. Drink, you everybody drink. drink. You got, now I'm starting to think Marcus has a thing with this whole, <laughs> yes, like, see. fill in the blank. We, we could totally write a whole bunch more of those. So... Uh, uh, the uh, ISCS store advises that the rugged com range of 802.16e, which Larry is, I don't know. No, oh, I, st I stumped him. I sprung that out on you. Stump the chump. It's oh, YMAX. It's YMAX. Fucking of course, it's YMAX. You knew it was YMAX. Fucking nobody uses YMAX. It says YMAX for those with long memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, fucking nobody uses WiMAX because you know. I why? didn't expect Jack to get it because you, you you know why? He has a short memory now. Yeah. He's old. You, you know why nobody <laughs> uses WiMAX? Why LTE? Yeah, yeah. WiMAX was cool for a month. Yeah, um, we st I still have my WiMAX card when they started to do, to do the it WiMAX deployment Island? here in Rhode Island. Yeah, and then LTE yeah. came out, and they're like, huh? Uh, um, yeah, this yeah. LTE thing. Yeah, it's kind of better. Yeah, way better. way better. So the vulnerabilities in this device are. <laughs> that it's Ymax. <laughs> Ymax. The first one is just <sighs> attackers can get administrative access to the kit over the network without authentication. Like, fuck. <sighs> I really. You mean I don't like know what to say no about that. <laughs> that I haven't already said at least twelve times on previous episodes. The second vulnerability, there's a buffer overflow in the web server, <sighs> which I've talked about at nauseum. Um, this one is labeled as a real treat. Password hashes and other sensitive information might, and it's in quotes, might be stored in an insecure format and accessible from local files or security logs. So let's store your sensitive slash information S in forward slash security logs. S forward slash might forward slash R slash G. Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. <sighs> Damn it. I, do, I don't. I could go on and rant about. Now, that's, that said. Uh, so you have to fill out an online support request to get a firmware update. <sighs> God That's what it. it says. It says that right there. It seems as asks customers to get in touch with support to request a firmware update. That's what has to happen. I would be willing to bet that if you throw the wrong software on things, you brick them. Oh, yeah. Well, so I mean, that's they, they're, they're trying to control it and that you can't just fix your stuff. And mm. I, 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 that whole space is, is terrifying. Yep. If I were a SCADA hacker, I, well, that's a now. Story. Now that said, you know, I I've done some work in some industries in a previous life, 
and I believe the conversation when we were we were doing some work for a company who shall remain nameless that brought in a device and said test this device before we deploy it in our environment so we did and we found a bunch of stuff and they had us contact the vendor in conjunction with them and say hey vendor your shit's messed up uh and the vendor said oh huh so how do you recommend we fix this uh and i turned to the people we did the work for can i tell them yes you can tell them how you guys recommend it and so we tell them and they said they didn't understand what we were asking for for fixes and then as a company not the company that i currently work for we were i i was asked to go and say contact the manufacturer and say hey uh that was kind of a bad thing. You guys got a little bit of egg on your face for one of your customers. And would you like us to test some of this stuff before you send it to market? And their response was, no, we have in-house guys for that. <laughs> My response was, they're not very good. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah. Oops. It is, by, way, by the way, for a company that I do not work for. Let me guess, uh, IP to serial interfaces? Uh, no. Hmm. Worse. <laughs> Worse. I've seen quite a bit of those of the IP to serial interfaces. <sighs> yeah, and it's, for a, it's a very large manufacturer that should know better. And I have oh, seen... I wouldn't be surprised. And I have seen really good things coming out of their QA department. Um, for testing stuff and releasing vulnerabilities for really obscure conditions, and this was far from an obscure condition. But, yeah. Stupid. 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 So, Security 101, show me your list. Yeah, I like this one. It you was like on, this? It was, I thought I, you'd it like it. Was, it was yeah. on my list, and I was like, oh, he's already got that one in there. Good one. So, um, he says that he notices that when he reads things, especially after breaches and the media saying stuff like, well, XYZ went wrong, and that's Security 101. I can't believe they didn't do XYZ. And he's unsure of what Security 101, 101 means. Really is. What, yeah. is, what does that mean? So he makes this request. He says, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're an, expert or an expert or even playing one on the <laughs> e internet, <laughs> yeah, nice. if you want to say X is Security 101, publish your full list of what you believe 101 to be. Otherwise, you can just go around to all these breaches and be like, oh, they didn't do that. That's Security 101. And Security 101 can just be whatever that company didn't do to get breached. And in the end, is that really Security 101? No, I think not. Mm. Yeah, And, and, especially and I, th I think that will depend on your shop and stuff, but still, it should all be Security 101 as a standard number, right? right. Well, th one of the things that, th that he's politely not calling out directly is uh, – <laughs> How many of those security 101 type comments come from, uh, well, you know, I'm one of them. They come from vendor pimps, or, but the people that are pushing. That's just security 101 to have our blinking yeah, light yeah, yeah, LED yep. box on the rack. You know, everybody needs to do this, and you've got. That's security 101. That's security 101 to give buckets of money to fill in whoever you hate the most this week. Um, <laughs> and, and you know the ironic part is? He was saying something about uh, lately, the first word, lately. I've noticed a lot of people are quoted in the media, and at the bottom there's an asterisk. By lately, I meant in 2012 when I wrote this, right after the LinkedIn breach. But I recent dis recently discovered that I hadn't <laughs> posted. posted. This is uh, <laughs> and it's still true. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read yeah, all yeah, of yeah, that. Right I just read his yep. recommendations. Yeah, I missed uh, that little footnote at the bottom. That's our friend. Um, that's uh, our friend, Mr. Showstack. Yeah, I want to. I want to read uh, something from Marcus Random that he posted on his website. Oh, yeah, today. there's a link in the show notes. There's this a link in the show notes. But the, to speak of to security one on one, um, Marcus says that through all the breach stuff, uh, if he was to speak to a specific breach, and he kind of, it's really awesome how he laid out. You know, people at dollar sign company name have not yet released details, which is appropriate given the instant response of this magnitude. I understand that they have the dollar sign responder name, FBI, NSA, CIA, Mandian, Army of Consultants, K2, 
Keystone cops involved have issued a press release and blah, 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 blah. So when he says that they, he was commentary on every breach, is, however, this illustrates the basic issues in information security, which is that organizations don't appear to have effective responses to basic malware and or phishing attacks and have aggregated critical data into central locations on their networks where it is accessible. Once an attacker gets inside, it is pretty easy for them to escalate privileges, find out where the data is, and exfiltrate it. Right, Joff, as a penetration tester, and, and Carlos? Yes. One of that is true. That's, that's yeah. true. But, uh, boy, I, uh, Marcus likes to go right to it, doesn't he? That's uh-huh. <laughs> then he says, organizations with critical data should segregate it off their network, perform regular vulnerability audits and remediation, maintain detailed system logs, and use two-factor authentication for administrator access. Because that's Security 101. In a sentence. <laughs> in a sentence. Right? Yep. Well, you know, yeah. one of the things that disappoints me in, in many of our engagements is, is the, um, the lack of internal segmentation that, that occurs in, in organizations. Uh, uh, and you take that at whatever OSI layer you want to, even you know, from network up, application, whatever. People don't seem to have um, – people haven't really gone beyond the um, – the hard shell, you know, uh, yeah. soft, soft interior kind of concept, which uh, it bothers me because um, we all know that's not the state of the art now. Uh, we know that's not the, 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 the state of the threats either. And, um, We've and folks been talking about the crunchy outside and the soft inside since like 1998, oh right? Yeah, yeah we're, talking, you know, we're talking over a dec- well over a decade uh, and folks have not really moved on from there and it – I, I grant them it's not easy to start doing that inside an environment, but it is necessary. It, it comes down to the argument I had years ago on the inside of the network. I'm like, well, why are you guys administering systems via Telnet or we're behind the firewall? It's like 1998 mentality, but we're st- it's the battle we're still facing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, I'm just it, full of rage this week. What is and I there's so much the more. The Patriots won the Super Bowl. I'm still kind of on a high from that. I, sh- I really shouldn't have this much rage, but this just infuriates me. <laughs> Imagine if you were a Seahawks fan. So I grew a beard, and now I'm smoking a pipe. <laughs> I don't. You call that a beard? <laughs> well, it's not. Like, it's like, look who is uh, in the same room as us. It's kind of hard to have a. Beard. I, I couldn't I mean. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Paul, because I couldn't see it from here. <laughs> Well, you know what? You guys got the. Never mind. I'll talk. I got about the blurry what. camera. That's what it is, man. It's the camera. We it's have the camera. No, Joff. You know what it is? We have testosterone. Oh. What, a- what's after the, after the show, I'll tell you what they call a goatee Ooh. in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know why? You know why you have it when you're at the rest area? Mm. To hide the chain link fence marks. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, that was inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> terrible. It was oh. terrible. So anyway, one of my stories. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Which one's worth I don't know. Oh, yeah. Let's do. There's a, a good article on uh, titled The World's Email Encryption Software Relies on One Guy Who Is Going Broke. And it's about, like, the one dude who maintains GPG. Um, and, yes, it has usability issues, to put it mildly. Mm. Uh, but it's what we've got, unless you want to pay a lot of money to somebody for something that arguably doesn't work much better. Uh, and if you read this story, um, it's like, yeah. So there's also a link there to his, his donations page. If you're a GPG supporter or think that kind of thing is important, you might want to throw him a few bucks. Um, it is, it, it's not a sustainable model. Uh, the last time there was a crisis, he got some funding, and it, you know he figured he could go for a few more months. Uh, but uh, you know this it can't really sustain from crisis to crisis. Uh, but uh, we can uh, maybe push off the next crisis a little bit by throwing him a few bucks. Anyway, so that yep. one's my story oh, number three. And uh, I saw something about that. <laughs> um, where is it? Someone included. Uh, in the GNU uh, GNUPG.org donate page uh, someone included in the message uh, cross-site scripting 
Oh, oh. <laughs> poor Te- guy. <laughs> script type text JavaScript alert. CC Zub gave you money and checked for XSS for free. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Is that called value add? <laughs> oh so. my! Oh my! Can't yeah, and it got included in the recent donor stuff. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Wait! Oh! Ouch! Oh! Stored right. XSS, no less. <laughs> That's a pretty Maybe good not. story on the history oh, of the what? GPG, by the way. No, Megatron! <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so, oh yeah, there's... there's Lol what? <laughs> Lol what? There's some interesting stuff there. Anyway, yes. that's that. Uh, go, what do- else? go donate if you use it. What else? What else? Uh, go donate. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool story. I, I didn't realize some of the aspects behind the... Yeah, so <coughs> uh, another quick one. Canary Watch. There's a website called... Uh, Canary Watch website. So uh, companies that put sort of canary messages in their public statements about um, warrant statements, uh, and this has started happening since Snowden began putting out, uh, you know, the Snowden stuff. Uh, Canary Watch site works with the EFF, Berkman Center, uh, NYU Technology and Law, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a simple statement from the company, like an ISP or whatever, that says the organization's never received a legal order for user data or other stuff that are accompanied by a gag order. So na- that specifically national security letters. And if they uh, issue those statements and then uh, stop issuing those statements or retract it from a website, that sort of um, indicates that that's happened. Uh, so it's uh, for the privacy conscious and those following this sort of thing. That's a so interesting little thing at Jack, the Canary Watch site. Yeah, Jack, explain to me what the Canary is all about. Because I don't so know if I know. Canary in a coal mine was the original thing. The miners yeah. used to take canaries down yep. into the Canary. So... What yep. this if is? The canary died. The ad was air, air was bad. Was to breed. Uh, get out. And then so the miner died shortly thereafter. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, warrant. Canary is a slang term for putting out a statement regularly that says we haven't had a national security letter or anything else where the feds have come to us and asked for uh, data and then a- applied a gag order. So right. it's usually done with a transparency report, you know, quarterly or annual reports of, you know. This is what we've done this year. This is, you know, law enforcement yep. interactions, whatever. Companies have started to put these things in that say, we've never received a national security letter, for example. Gotcha. Or we have received. Uh, they can't. They often can't say they oh. received one. Okay. So but they, can say, but they can say on the contrary that they, they can not. say they have not received a national security letter or however they want to word it. Yep. And if the next report comes out and says doesn't have the canary then it means that company has stated, without stating it, they've had to pull the statement that says they, they haven't been. Mm-hmm. The implication, therefore, is that they have been. Uh, mm-hmm. So if uh, Indicating the positive indicating by not right. including the right. negative. Right. 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 So that's the idea. It's, it's um, not terribly reliable. You don't know. I mean, and it's not that all national security letters are bad. Uh, you know, it could certainly be that, you know, Google gets issued a national security letter on three really bad people that use Gmail. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not that targeted sort of law enforcement stuff that we worry about. It's the it's the broad sweeping stuff. Um, and, you know, what, what really terrifies me is the Five Eyes stuff where you can, you know, you can blind four different <coughs> governments. The fifth finds that everybody has it. And there's also sharing beyond that, as, you know, the allies selectively share things. So it just came out about the German. Anyway, just an interesting little thing for the, the professionally paranoid on Canary Watches. Interesting. Uh, Doesn't that sort of characterize our industry, professionally paranoid? I think so. Yeah. I, I think uh, it does. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, I have a, I'm not, I'm oh, not even, I'm not even going to go into the full rant. Oh, my please. fourth story on the skills shortage. There's there's another rant skills shortage story. Um, does this, this involve the federal government by any chance? This one doesn't, but this one oh. actually makes some good points. Uh, let me read just a little bit. It used to be easy to sell specialized security gizmos. These days when a point product gets pitched to a CISO, the response is likely looks nifty, but I don't have the staff to deploy it. So I have all sorts of rants here. Um, one I've gone off on before is the government tends to uh, not pay well and not treat people well uh, 
in the space. That's a challenge. They have some unreasonable expectations for young people. Um, that's a challenge. Um, they invest heavily in college students, and I think they should. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of older administrative people who's, you know, their their CCNA is not of much value in a in a you know SDN world and things. Uh, but they have a proven track record. Now, their work record may not be good, uh, but they have a proven work record who are probably, to me, worth an, uh, a small investment to see if they can be retrained or have their skills augmented to the point to be valuable in security space because not everybody needs to be a ninja. Um, but what this point uh, frustrates me is missing the point that... Um, that's cool technology. I don't have the people that can run it. Uh, and then calling that a skills shortage, not unusable technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this doesn't. If, you know, yeah. as much as <laughs> as much as Apple hates me, um, you can hand children an iPad and they'll be doing stuff on it in no time. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, right. and all right. that's and you know how much of the stuff that we deal with in our security world um, can you hand to average people? I mean, it's really cool when you hand it to. To engineering mindset, you know, hacker mindset people, and we're willing to, you know, work really hard and play with stuff and yep. export it to Excel and then, you know, mangle the XML and try to make it useful. And no, why don't you just like, hey, you need to worry about these three things. And then if you have spare time, worry about these seven mm -hmm. and forget the rest because you can't deal with it anyway. But no, you have to hire a couple of full time employees to interface with whatever you're doing. Oh my God, I used the word interface. Please forgive me, everybody. Inter drew. Interface, man. Inter I interface in your yeah. Oh, it does. But it does. The point in there that that we have to change the way we sell security um, is, uh, I think, um, a good point. It comes oh, back it to is. what um, Michael uh, Santangelo was saying last week that um, our conversation with the execs in general has to change. Um, we have to. Uh, Modify it from a, a negative "the world is falling down" kind of conversation to a to a positive conversation. That's not an easy trick, um, but because we're not getting the dollar still, uh, in especially in those larger shops, uh, uh, I, I'll try not to generalize too much. But but I think that, that security is falling short still in terms of the investment that it needs. So that's a complicated issue. It is, and it's. Um, <sighs> One of the things that a lot of people selling security products uh, miss is that if you tell a CISO something is going to cost him 100000 bucks, not only does he have to come up with $100,000 or she have to come up with $100,000, she has to figure out how many full-time employees it takes to actually get useful data out of that, mm -hmm. to, to actually run the stupid thing and then integrate that with other things because somebody's going to have to do XML parsing or copy paste into Excel or some other spreadsheet because that tool doesn't talk with another tool. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a hundred thousand right. dollars, I mean, hundred thousand dollars a year plus three full-time employees. What? You know, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a much bigger investment is what it, right, what it ends up right. being. It, it is. Um, it's a lot more. And but, the but, way we need plus, to sell it. Plus, yeah. plus for these shops, it's a, uh, it's a conversation not just about the capability of the device is ultimately what you're saying. It's a conversation of how can this ultimately enhance your business process because they're looking, you know, these shops are looking at it from, how, let's face it, we've said it before, you know, everybody's making some sort of widget ultimately, right? They're looking at the bottom line of, of getting those widgets out. So how is the cost of the security appliance and, and the employees that go around it going to enhance my process you know, mitigate my risks, um, save me from lawsuit, massive breach, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to look at it against that kind of uh, backdrop, um, not not just it's wonderful technology. <laughs> I think I went on a little bit of a tangent there, no, you're, but you're you're, uh, you're, you're uh, on on target. Uh, I, I agree. You know, and. Actually, Larry's on target too. Larry, yeah. Larry's on target too. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, you know, we're going to if it gets accepted. I, I, our friend and our friend Steve McGrath and I have put in a talk for B-Side San Francisco on how to sell security without selling your soul. And if it gets accepted, we'll talk about things like being honest with your, your customers and prospective customers and you know making sure they understand what it takes. Because if you don't make them understand what it takes to use your products, 
uh, you're not going to get the renewal. Uh, you know, you're not going to have a happy customer. Uh, every unhappy customer is uh, much Usually more Usually someone else's customer. After right. the contract not stuff. only are they somebody else's <laughs> customer, they're yep. somebody that's talking about, you know, if they end up happier elsewhere. So you should, you should really mm-hmm. make sure that you, uh, you're, you're honest up front in the sales cycle. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a conversation that needs to be had in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. Did, did you guys read the WordPress uh, vulnerability scan or WP scan? There's now a GPL fork of that called Vane. Yeah, we talked about that. Those did we talk about Vane already? Really. Vane is okay. the one that's the people that took wor- WP scan from Ryan Dewhurst and forked. Oh, I thought someone made another fork of it. Vane is actually the one. Yeah, okay. Vane is. Now the that one. I was looking at their license, and yeah. I, that's that's actually um, interesting for the for the pen testing folks because. Uh, <laughs> With WordPress being what it is, uh, it <laughs> is useful to have a piece of crap security-wise. Yeah. It is, that what you're it is useful to have a tool like that to say, "Oh, look, there's five hundred thousand low-hanging pieces of fruit <laughs> in the in the name of WordPress plugins." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're useful tools uh, just to kind of point that stuff. I out. I gave a talk once, and it was from from WordPress to domain admin. That <laughs> was actually on a pen test. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, John, John, and I did that one. That was. I had a fun. I had a fun time with a with one uh, not so long ago, which was, um, and I'm sure you've encountered these. It was a file upload vulnerability. That's yeah, that's exactly what we up. That's exactly what we uh, exploited. File that. upload yeah. to domain admin in one afternoon. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and, and that goes back to our previous point, Joff, about the low hanging fruit, uh, the crunchy outside and uh, squishy inside. Right, yeah. how you can take a vulnerability like that and go to domain admin, and, and yeah. that's you know, obviously I spend a lot of time in the vulnerability management space, and people are like, "Well, how do I prioritize my vulnerabilities?" And they're like, "Well, I'll just go by like the severity, and then criticality of assets, and then you know maybe um, where it is on the network or in." Right. And I, right. I do I I do subscribe to that, but at the end of the day, I'm like. None of that shit matters because someone's going to find a ridiculous file upload vulnerability that might be, maybe it's even a low severity, a lower severity exploit because they need some other kind of piece of information to do something with it. But then there's another low vulnerability that gives them that piece of information. And then it's on a server that people don't care about, but that server maybe has access to another server and then you kind of build it from there. Like, so you can prioritize your vulnerabilities h- however you want, unless you're fixing 98% of them, someone's going to be so, able to pop So, so I, I steer a lot of my customers, and, and I, I do swear by this, back to the top 20 critical controls. You know, what, what the community's done there and, and, and with SANS uh, and, and the council stewardship, stewardship is, is awesome. I mean, these are actionable items. It comes back to yeah. what, some things we were talking about. Hygiene. Like, right. uh, last week, right, with 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 Santa, right? He was like, yeah. you're going to get popped, so you might as well get yeah. good at detecting people. You've been so, seeing so, that for so years. Do, mm. do your hygiene. Know your hardware and software. Know your inventory backwards and forwards. If you've got a server in the corner that's that's old and dusty and you think it's it's not, not valuable, just turn go turn it, it off. off. Turn, it, turn off. it off. Turn it off. <laughs> because that is how you're going to get compromised. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean it's that kind of stuff, and and I, you know, I just you you say it and say it and say it, but it it is the the dusty dark corners of environments is is how people suffer because it just takes one thing and then pivot from that thing to the next thing and then that thing to the next thing and before you know it, yep. you've got critical system access, and the game's up. That's a difficult thing to explain in a boardroom sometimes how that shit can chain together and ultimately leave someone owned, right? It can, yeah, it can well, be a difficult that, thing. That's, I think the trick we suffer from in the community is we know our craft from the perspective of how we can do these things. It's about taking that and joining it back with the business risks. It's about mm-hmm. giving the, 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 the C-level, the boardroom folks, a, a real impactful statement about what that means to them, you know, and it usually comes back to money, right? There's how much money you can lose. Now, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not sure even how to say this, the amount of public attention on breaches this past year 
uh, has kind of lit that up in neon. So, uh, and I think we've all said it in the last part of last year that this is an opportunity for our community if we can try to draw on that uh, in our conversations uh, at the exec level. Um, for those of us who have them, I, I don't usually have them, but um, and, and to kind of join the dots for people. Um, we, you know, perhaps we'll have better luck at succeeding uh, with with uh, paying attention to this stuff. But just talking about tactical stuff, um, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything to a lot of the sea level folks. They'll they'll look at you and, and the eyes will glaze over and so forth. Right. So cool. You guys have anything else? Some might argue that you already are a dog. <laughs> it's Jack's dog. If Jack Daniel Jack's. were a dog. Jack's sharing his laptop pictures. And I can't see them because I'm not with you guys. It's just a dog with a beard. You know. Hey, look, here's much. one of the great pictures Steve took on that road trip. Oh wait, no, that was mine. I never got on the back picture. of your laptop. Wait, did, you, oh, did you take? You didn't take that picture. He took that picture, or did you take that no, picture? No, I was. You kidding? You think he'd scramble out on a ledge and risk his life to take that picture? You took that picture. <laughs> yes. And he was supposed to be the expert. He was. He has thousands of photos lost on an SD card to prove it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's have a laugh at his expense. Uh I'd say we should drink. All right. Anyone have any other stories? No. No. Okay. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back and wrap up the show. And we're back just to say goodbye. Don't forget to visit shop.securityweekly.com. Buy your Hack Naked t-shirt. Discount code IHACKNAKED. Gives you 10% off. Uh, Securityweekly.com forward slash IOT to get information about my course embedded device security assessments for the rest of us. Larry. Yes. Hey, uh, Larry, choose two celebrities to be your parents. Jessica Alba and Einstein. Very good. I thought you were going to say Chuck Norris. No, but his uh, human blood types are normally O positive, A positive, or AB. Chuck Norris's blood type is (laughs) AK-47. Is there a K type? I didn't know. (laughs) Those are Uzis, not AK-47. It doesn't matter. uh, matter. You know what? It's Chuck Norris. It doesn't matter. Larry, well, thanks everyone for watching and listening. It's been another fabulous edition of Security Weekly. We'll see everyone here next week. Larry, take us out. Over and... Method not allowed. Out! (laughs) Method not allowed. Nice. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Fear of spiders is arachnophobia. Fear of having no escape and being closed in a small space or rooms is claustrophobia. And fear of Chuck Norris is called logic. (laughs) (laughs) Common sense. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. There is no theory of evolution. Just a list of creatures Chuck Norris is allowed to continue living. (laughs) Patriots rule